The four color theorem states that any map can be colored with only four colors so that no two regions that touch each other are the same color. When we say map, we mean any combination of lines or curves that divides a 2D plane into regions. Whether it be a map of the United States or a Care Bears coloring page, divisions of a plane into closed regions form a map. To start, let's imagine we have a random country structure. Any map we draw can be represented as a network or graph, no matter the complexity of the structure. We can number each country and treat it as a vertex in our graph space, and if two countries touch each other, we connect their vertices together with a link. It is much easier to interpret this graph structure, and we can even see how different maps can yield the same networks. Instead of trying to look at all the possible maps to see if we can color them so that no two touching countries are the same color, let's look at all the possible types of graph structures that we can form. The corresponding rule for our graph structures is that no two connected vertices can be the same color. The first type of structure that appears is a ring. Rings are interconnected loops of vertices and they can come in any size. Rings will form map structures that look like this. To color loops of any size, repeating alternating colors can be used. For loops with an odd number of vertices, three colors are needed. For loops with an even number, only two colors are needed. Now we can go back to the network we made from our map and look at it in terms of interconnected loops. At this point, you may be wondering, well, what happens if I draw more links connecting vertices in a ring? These types of connections lead to two situations. The first is where you merely segment a larger ring into smaller rings, and the second is where you form crossing links. Crossing links are a more complex structure that we will address in a bit. While we have begun to explore the many different ways to interconnect loops, let's look at one of the examples that people thought might need five colors. It consists of triangle rings connected to even more triangle rings. For this type of connectivity, we can imagine a map structure like this. We find that this interconnected ring structure needs four colors and not just the three from the smaller triangle rings. Let's see why this is. By adding together triangle rings, we have formed a new type of graph structure. Hidden in the triangles is a larger pentagon with a vertex in the center. We already know that loops with an odd number of vertices need three colors, but now there's a vertex in the center acting as a hub that touches all five of the vertices and thus three colors. This means that the central hub must be a new color, the fourth color. Whenever we form a hub connected to all vertices in a ring of odd size, four colors are required. If the hub doesn't connect to all of the vertices, since only one vertex needed to be a third color in a ring of odd size, we can make the vertex not connected to the hub and the hub the same color, and thus once again we will only need three colors. Now we need to discuss link crossings in graphs. While normally this is allowed in larger graph and network structures, we have a special physical limitation of our problem. All the graphs and graph structures we are considering must be possible to draw as a two-dimensional map. Let's start by maximizing the number of link crossings in a ring. This will form something called a click, where every vertex is connected to every other vertex. For a ring of size 3, every vertex is already connected to every other vertex, so a 3 click and a 3 ring are the same thing. We already know what a 3 click looks like in a map. The next type of structure is a 4 click. We connect every vertex to every other vertex in a 4 ring. Drawing this as a map structure is a little harder and yields a surprising result at first. One of the regions of our map is now sectioned off completely and can't connect to any future regions. To see why this is, let's untangle this graph and look at it a different way. The crossed four click structure becomes a ring of three with a hub. We already know that rings of odd size with a fully connected hub require four colors, but now we can see how the part that was sectioned off is like the hub in the middle of the ring. If we assume for a moment that links can't cross in a graph from a map, this explains why a four-click forms a region that is sectioned off in the map and can't connect to other regions. Now let's try to draw a five-click. We have a five ring with every vertex connected to every other. If we try to draw this structure as a map, we find we can't. It is impossible to draw a five-click with closed shapes on a 2D plane. What we have just stumbled upon is known as the planarity of a graph or a subgraph and a five-click is known as a non-planar graph. First, let's define what a planar graph is. Planar graphs are graphs that can be drawn such that none of their links cross on a plane or on a sphere. For a sphere, you can think of Earth's countries on a globe, as this is also a type of map. 
A non-planar graph structure has an untangleable crossing of links. Our five click is a type of non-planar graph, but you may be more familiar with another type of non-planar graph. Known as the utility problem, the setup consists of three houses that all need to be connected to electric, gas, and water plants. The lines to connect these houses to the utilities cannot cross on a 2D plane. It quickly becomes apparent that it is impossible to do this. This is because we are trying to form a non-planar graph on a plane. The larger result that we have stumbled upon is that all maps form planar graphs. Thus, any form of non-planar connectivity is not a valid map graph. This means that all maps can be redrawn as planar graphs with no crossings of links. If map-to-graph structures cannot have any crossings, they must only consist of interconnected rings, as discussed earlier. We found that these rings need two colors if they have an even number of vertices, and three if they have an odd number of vertices. When we began to connect rings, we found a new rule. Rings of odd size with a hub in the center will require four colors, but when these hub rings interconnect with larger networks, only three colors are seen, as the fourth color is locked away and can't form links anymore. This is true for any hub chosen at random in a successfully colored map. This means that any new ring structure added to a graph will have access to an emergency fourth color to shift the oscillating color phase in case it needs it. In order to use this strategy to color any map, we first need to complete the graph and then it is possible to identify the rings of even an odd size and even an odd hub rings. Picking a hub of an odd ring to start and working your way out, coloring odd rings with three colors and leftover even rings with two to the best of your ability will allow you to tra traverse and color any planar graph and thus any map with four colors. Obviously, this is not a formal or complete proof of the four color theory since none exists, but it follows the logic of De Morgan's 1853 proof. This problem has only ever been proven by a computer with Epfel and Henkin's 1976 code testing 1,834 subgraphs capable of forming all possible map structures. But as of 1996, the number of subgraphs necessary to test has dropped to 633. While this problem seems simple, it is actually quite complex and continues to elude mathematicians. I'm hoping it helped you gain an intuition for how graphs and networks can be used to remap and solve a problem, not just for coloring, but for practical purposes too.